we need to read just two of the one. Uh, I don't. At least my title, I would say. She's talking about the agenda. No, no. She's talking about the agenda. Oh. Make sure. Let me do it. Take about a minute. Okay. I think if you just read down to the instructions, if you wish to speak, please don't start by. I think after that sentence. <laughs> Okay. Let's see, do you think we'll be added to the governor's ships for you? Page peak, you got me, that don't want much room there. Yeah. A lot of weeks ago. <laughs> I wish I was in that boat. Needy.
emergency meeting. The promise line has been set up 917-900-1022. The access code is 32347. And this is not a toll-free number and you may be subject to long distance charges according to your loan. When the chairperson opens for public comment, please follow the below instructions. Dial 5. The moderator will unmute your line when it's your turn to speak and notify you by announcing the last four digits of your telephone number. Please announce your name and address and you will be allowed to speak for three minutes. Any person wishing to address the board regarding an agenda item will be given three minutes for comments. A commenter may only speak once or one time for each agenda item. Thank you. Now, do I have a, do I get a, any motion for approval of the agenda? Motion. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Voting number four. The board consider declaring a local state of emergency for Tropical Storm Elsa. <laughs> if you'd like um, our emergency management director to come forward and provide an update. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Fourth of July, you all. I love that dress. It's got all the colors of America in it. <laughs> uh, first of all, I want to say that we have a great team here. Past few days, been on the phone constantly with Marsha, Luanda, everybody out here in this audience, Hank, Dan. This is, if you haven't met, uh, John Lauk. He's the new deputy director of emergency management. John? John Lauk. L-O-U-K. So, um, if you'll see in front of you, uh, we just got off the conference call at 10 30, 2 30. There was one this morning also, and this is the latest one from 2 30. The latest forecast shows the center of the storm right below Cuba. It's heading into Cuba. They're not sure if it's going to go right below or through Cuba. If it goes through Cuba, that's better because it's going to break up the storm. But they're not sure it's going to do that. Some of their forecasts are showing a more westerly path. That has not been updated. We'll know more about that this afternoon at 5.15. So if that happens, that will put a more westerly track and it's showing up here on the screen. And that would not, what would that do for us? That would put us on the bad side of the storm, the eastern side. So we're praying that it stays on this, but as you see in the cone, we're still you know, well within the cone. What they're telling me, I asked a specific question about the storm surge. They're saying three to five feet right now, just like we have with any tropical storm that we've had in the past. So I think that that would cover some of our beach access roads that might go, you know, to the top of the seawall. They're not seeing it going over unless that track shifts. But what I'm telling you now is on the current forecast that it's on now. Uh, Tuesday night into Wednesday morning is when they expect it to be reaching our area. The wind gusts, the wind gusts right now are showing what 60 miles per hour. It is slowing down. The storm is. Uh, the wind has decreased, as you saw. It was a hurricane, but it could go back into the Gulf and strengthen in those warm waters. That's what we don't want. 
We are asking you to sign this local state of emergency just in case. You know, we, we, we can't predict exactly where it's going to be. Um, the road department has done an excellent job. Lawanda, has, Lawanda and Hank have standbacks being passed out as I texted you all. That's at the um, scene hatch you roll off and also at the road department. I think that's going well. Okay. Uh, the rain. Over the past 48 hours, in some areas, we have received up to four to five inches of rain. I don't know if any of you have. Yeah. 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 And what's that doing to our water table? I mean, everything's saturated. So if any more rain comes, and it's coming, then we need to be prepared for that. Our rivers are looking fine right now. The Steenhatchee River, one of the gauges broke. It's completely gone. But we have other ways to track that. We, we have individuals down there that are keeping us updated on the, the river levels. We will get more rain. Like I said, portions of Taylor County, mainly in the Steenhatchee area, that's getting the most rain. But right now, we're not seeing any flooding in those. And I'm sure you've been down there lately also. Not seeing any flooding right now. Well, I mean, so the rains are they would have so bad impact as far as how widespread that the rains are able to be. It's starting to show up, but it's okay. And they are saying that the bulk of the rain will probably be in Lafayette County and Suwannee County and in our area. So what's that going to do to the Steenhatchee River? It could make that river rise because all of the water that makes the Steenhatchee River rise comes from the bay. It's okay. running under both bridges at 19 and 10. Right. Now. And that one is the one that. Both bridges are running. The river is running under both the bridges at 10 on 19. So I mean, the levels are already up. Right. And as that trickles on down, that won't decrease for some time. And these rains will continue to add to that. Like we're going to have rain this afternoon and more rain. More rain tomorrow. Christy, um, if the storm follows the current track, how much rain can we expect? That will be three to six inches on the current track through the next 72 hours. If it, you know, moves westward, it could be more than that. They said up to seven inches. So that that's, we're not saying it's coming, but we have to be prepared. We want, um, and we are. We just want y'all to know, as I'm sure you do. These gentlemen back here, they're on the ball, and these two ladies right here. So. We're ready. Uh, you can look into <coughs> pump rentals. We have one at emergency management if needed. So we're ready. We have the pump and we have the set of ramps and we have the hose that we purchased two years ago. And um, Deputy Director Lauk had that um, brought to Forestry and he had it checked out, the pump that we do have. Um, Rwanda was able, last time we had this happen, we had rental pumps. We can't do that again. I'm going to work hard on locating those tomorrow if they're needed with Rwanda. I reached out to Dylan, but I have not received a return call. Um, but um, we have we have some time. We can hit that um, tomorrow and Tuesday and see if we can get a hold of anyone. Um, do we have the water bladders or some kind of water sources ready? Yes, ma'am. We have the one water buffalo that we usually take to not all rise. Yeah, because that's my area that I'm most concerned about in terms of water. Mm -hmm. And we all, if you see they need that, let us know. Wanda, anyone, we'll have that down there right away. Christy, Chairperson from Smith, I have one more question. At what point, um, if this, if the storm should shift, then would there be a consideration for any type of evacuation? Um, if or, it, but they don't expect the this to be anything more than a tropical storm. Okay. They don't expect it at all to reach Hurricane 1. It could, and of course we would come back to you and let you know that right away so that the shelter's ready, the school's ready, <laughs> our shelter manager's ready. So that, that's not going to be any problem. That can be opened up in, in 30 minutes. A lot of evacuation uh, around the beaches, if that if it comes to that, it takes a while to get everything out from down there. A day and a half is usually what we, so tomorrow we should know a lot more after it goes over Cuba. So I will keep you all updated and if we need to evacuate, I'll come back to you and we'll, we'll make that order so you all can make that order. A lot more people at Keaton Beach yeah. today than there was yesterday. Ooh, lots more. Um, it's a lot of rain, 
um, lots of rain down there. Um, but it was, when I left about an hour and a half ago, it had cleared up, lots of boats going out. Of course, I hit rain coming into town. And then I went over to my Ellison Road area, that's where I've been, ran into somebody on a golf cart. So um, it's, it's um, it, it, there's water down between um, Pruitt and um, um, Howell, but, but not a lot yet. And the ditch is full in front of Howell's house also. So I'm kind of trying to keep a pretty close uh, eye on that area. Any other questions? Uh, anything you see, anything you need, let us know. Did you all have anything else? Now, when do you, oh, yeah. when, you, you said you were going to meet again at 515. When are y'all getting updates? We're getting them at 930 from the National Weather Service, 1115 from the Hurricane Center, 230 from the National Weather Service, 515 from the Hurricane Center. And I can call the meteorologist anytime. So we are going to activate the EOC for the level two tomorrow morning at eight o'clock. Didn't tell you that, but surprise. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be on call all the time. If either of you need anything, let us know. I want to thank you all for, for caring about this county so much, like you always do. Yeah, Congressman Dunn called me from on the calendar to know that he's willing to help us. Willing and ready, anytime you need. He said you had his first one done. Have any of you heard from our representative or no? Yeah, yeah. Shelly. Mm -hmm. He no. emailed me asking, or his assistant in asking how we're doing. Okay, thanks. All right, we've got <laughs> what do we need to do now? The motion to uh, declare, declare a local state of emergency. I'll make a motion to declare a local state of emergency. I'll second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I think you need to adopt the resolution, correct? Okay. This one here? Yes. Okay. Do we need to read it or uh, get our clerk to read it by title only? Yes. Do I have a motion we read by title only? Second. Motion second, read by Kyle Long. Did I get a roll call vote on Aye. 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 Okay. Go ahead, Clerk. Local State of Emergency Declaration, Taylor County Board of County Commissioners, a resolution of the Board of County Commissioners of Taylor County, Florida, declaring a state of local emergency, waiving procedures and formalities during the period of such emergency, <coughs> authorizing and directing the Taylor County Emergency Management Director to make to take whatever prudent actions as may be necessary to protect the health, safety, and welfare of the community pursuant to this declaration. Do I do adopt it? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. What else is coming before this meeting? Mr. Dick, I have one more I didn't let you know, but Dixie County has signed their local state. They did that on Friday. And um, Liberty County has. Most of the other counties in our region will be meeting. And has the governor declared a state of emergency for our area? No, ma'am. Um, it's mostly those areas east of the track now. However, he, you know, right away, if it shifts, he'll include all of our area. Okay. Do, uh, can I ask a question? Go ahead. Do any any commissioners have anybody that's underwater? Or yeah, everybody's I okay. Police, I mean, I call a strong request of uh, the rain drop or two. <laughs> No houses, watering houses, or anything. So, if we need a motion, shelter, who do we call? Mr. We, we have it ready. It's an elementary school. Superintendent's on board. I, I, I want to thank you all. I know that you're working round the clock, and uh, I, I want to tell you how much I appreciate what y'all do, what you are doing as staff as well and anybody else out there i know that fdot they they're involved too they're 
they're on call and getting things ready. They do a lot. Sometimes we don't recognize them, but they do a lot in terms of the roadways and everything in the forestry department. So it's really a team effort, and I, I truly appreciate all of y'all. With that being said, I appreciate the commissioners and your due diligence in getting this together. Thank you. Wonder we appreciate staff. Okay. Might not say it enough, but we do. All right. What else do I need? Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to second. All the favor. Aye. Aye. Another meeting. Three hours. If we need to have another meeting, you call it.